Hello, glad to have you with us on Newsline at Yuko Fukushima with the latest at the hour. Tokyo Electric Power Company has begun testing one of the damaged reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant to see if it can proceed with a plan to submerge the fuel rods. A robot took this photo inside the number one reactor building on Tuesday. TEPCO on Wednesday increased the rate of water injection into the number one reactor. The company will monitor changes in the water level to check for leaks in the containment vessel. TEPCO hopes to fill the number one and three reactors containment vessels with water by mid-July to cool and stabilize the fuel rods. TEPCO says it will raise the rate of injection from 6 to 10 tons per hour for 6 hours and then to 14 tons per hour. The temperature and pressure in the containment vessel will be monitored for 18 hours. The utility says it will then lower the rate back to 6 tons per hour by Thursday morning and send robots into the reactor building to check for leaks. Tuck also mentioned it'll make sure the containment vessel can withstand strong aftershocks with the extra water rate inside. The firm says robots on Tuesday detected radiation levels of up to 1,120 millisieverts per hour inside the number one reactor building. It says some contaminated water may be leaking from the reactor into external pipes. Well, a woman working at the plant has been exposed to radiation more than three times the legal safety limit. The woman in her 50s showed no health problems and a medical checkup. Her employee, Tepco, says she was in charge of managing disaster-related supplies and showing firefighters around the plant's compound. The woman worked at the plant for 11 days after the March 11 earthquake and tsunami and was exposed to 17.55 millisieverts of radiation. The figure is more than six times the permissible amount for women, which is set at five millisieverts per three months. She may have inhaled radioactive material when taking off protective gear, as internal exposure accounted for much of the total. The company is now measuring radiation exposure of other female workers at the plant. Well, Japan's science ministry has released a map projecting cumulative radiation exposure near the Fukushima plant over the next year, it's the ministry's first estimate to long-term contamination. The contour map shows the total amount of radiation a person would be exposed to through March 11th of next year by staying outdoors for eight hours a day. It's based on readings at more than 2,000 points near the plant on or before last Thursday. The area within the red line shows where annual exposure is expected to reach the safety limit of 20 millisieverts or more. The area spreads to the northwest of the plant. Earlier this month, the government announced an expansion of the evacuation zone, which included the area to the northwest. Goshi Hosono, a senior member of the government's nuclear task force, says it's unlikely the new map will pr prompt a change in the evacuation zone. The Science Ministry says it will update the date, uh, data twice a month on its website. It also says it plans to release a map of radiation levels in the soil. Japanese experts say that seismic activities have increased in the Pacific Ocean in recent years. They think this may have been a sign of the massive quake of March 11th. The Coordinating Committee for Earthquake Prediction met on Tuesday to discuss last month's magnitude 9 earthquake. The committee is made up of experts from universities and research institutes. Two days before the quake, a magnitude 7.3 quake occurred off the coast of Sandiku on March 9. Nagoya University professor Koshin Yamaoka analyzed the two quakes and said the earlier one may have been an indicator of the massive tremor. The first tremor on March 9 occurred northeast of the magnitude 9 quake. Smaller quakes happened after the first tremor. The focuses of the smaller quakes gradually moved closer to the focus of the massive earthquake. The Geospatial Information Authority of Japan also said that coastal areas of Miyagi and Chiba prefectures sank during the huge quake, but some rose 5 to 8 centimeters afterwards. It said tectonic plates are continuing to shift after the massive quake. Regrettably, I wasn't able to predict that a stronger quake would hit after the magnitude 7.3 tremor. Professor Matsuzawa said his group will closely monitor seismic activities and tectonic movements.